Good morning. We're on the river. It's actually started off really well. I've been catching silvers and a perch, one a chuck. So we're already not blanking, so it's already infinitely better than the last session. So I'm going to continue feeder fishing. If the fish start to come up in the water, which I think they'll do when, it's the, uh, when it gets to the middle of the day, I'm going to break out a float rod and do some waggler fishing, so stay tuned. I might be doing float fishing, but if not, you'll see me doing some feeder fishing. Let's see how the day goes. <laughs> Right, still catching fish, which is a good thing. But I'm going to take two minutes out today and I'm going to show you the rig I'm using today. Rig I'm using, nice and simple. Cannot get any simpler than this. If I could just catch it to freaking show it to you, it'd be awesome. Pardon my language. Right. On one end, a size 12 hook tied to 0, 2, 5 fluorocarbon. He's taking the maggots off of it. And it is 4 feet long. We're fishing the river here. So you want your feeder to hit the deck and your bait to come nice and slowly down after it. Most of your bites will come on the drop. We then have a 3 inch twizzled loop, nice and simple. The twizzled loop connects to your hook length. I then have a little rubber stopper. I'm using something different today. Normally I just have a swivel on the line, but I've put one of these little Guru feeder stems on. This is the large version and about a foot and a half up the line I have another rubber stopper just to kind of you know if I'm when I'm unhooking the fish the feeder tip doesn't the feeder doesn't slide back down to the end line but that's it and when you're casting it because you've used the twizzled loop it keeps your your main line and your hook length apart from the feeder it's pretty good I've used something like this before I've used a few different rigs you've seen me use like fixed pat noster rigs for for, for bream fishing and hybrids You've seen me use like a loop to loop where I tied like a, a 12 inch loop and there's a swivel and a clip on the 12 inch loop so basically your your feeder can move 12 inches that would be classed as a fixed feeder rig if you're going to fish the Preston Cup or the Feeder Masters you have to have a free running feeder rig you can't have anything fixed and because I'm catching decent fish most of the time here, I fish one a chuck even, I'm putting as many maggots as I can cram on the size 12 hook. If I started off, I started off fishing with like three maggots and I was catching fingerling roach. So I put it up to like five maggots and I'm starting to catch the better stamp of roach. Standard feeder fishing for me, you know, I started off fishing with a, a, a bait up feeder and I filled the bait up feeder. I used it for about 10 casts. Well, not about, I used it for 10 casts. And then I switched to this uh, 40 gram large Guru window feeder. Fishing in relatively deep water here. You see me fish here for pike in the winter, so that's me just getting some coarse fishing now here, and it's not a bad place to fish. You know, it's nice and quiet. The weather forecast gives it to be uh, like this up until uh, one o'clock, half one, and then it starts to rain. So I'll be fishing here probably to about maybe three. 
Then I've got to go and pick up a new bed chair. I've got a Fox R3 sleep system. So I'm going to go and pick that up today. And that means that I can do, uh, hopefully do more overnight fishing with a decent bed chair. At least something that's got better lumbar, lower lumbar support for my wrecked back. I did have a JRC cocoon bed chair, which was excellent. I still have it. Excellent bed chair, but it doesn't provide any real support for your lower back. So you can't really do any more than a night. Otherwise you're just in absolute pieces. You know, I have issues with my, uh, the discs in the lower lumbar region, they're kind of herniated. Well, not kind of, they are herniated. But they're herniated in such a way that if I bend, you know, in a certain direction, then it's like I've been electrocuted, so it's not nice. So you just have to uh, suck it up. I've been uh, reducing my daily intake of tramadol. I was on 400 mils of maxitram, which is like the maximum you can take. And the doctor kept pulling me in saying, you know, we need to reduce this, we need to reduce this, there's a risk of cancer and blah, blah, blah. And I keep saying to him, you know, give me something else. Replace the maxitram. They won't do that. I talk, they talked about surgery on the lower lumbar, but I'm too young. Talked about uh, where they drill into your discs put a balloon in there and then fill the balloon up with like liquid bone that goes rock hard so it kind of spaces your vertebrae back out again but they won't do that on me because I'm only 40 which is nice of them isn't it sort of suck it up typical now I switched on the camera and I'm not going to bite. But. It's a beautiful day. Can't fault the day. River is low in comparison to what you've seen in the winter. Which is great. But. I'm going to continue fishing. And I will talk to you in a minute. 20 minutes later. When the rain comes through, we just had a shower come through. Kills the fishing, no bites, nothing. Still been keeping the feet in, still been casting, but nothing, no bites. Now the rain's beginning to die off of it. So hopefully the bites will pick up again. Don't know what it is. It just seems to be when the rain starts, the bites stop. Finally got worm. The worms came from Willie's Worms in England. Uh, pretty good service. Missed that bite. Talking to you guys, distracted you see. Posted on a Tuesday here and a Wednesday. Can't really beat that for service. Hopefully that the sh fishing shops will be opening soon but I don't actually know when they'll be opening, but hopefully soon. Even if it's just for click and collect. See, if you were a nice big roach, you'd be there going, I'd have that, I'd be like, that's like kebab to a roach. That's 
That's like having your doner kebab with extra garlic sauce. So, let's hope the fish switch back on. Eleven seconds it takes a forty five gram feeder to hit the or a forty gram feeder even to hit the bottom. Eleven seconds. So it's pretty deep, but it's deeper than most places of the river. The quality of roach that I was getting at the very beginning was just little fingerling roach. But the uh, the bigger roach did come through. I'm feeding senses Grosgar Dawn's Noir, which is translation means it's big roach black. The reason I use a lot of dark mixes isn't because I'm an old-fashioned goth that's into heavy metal. I'd like to have the uh, the feed roughly the same sort of shade of colour as the bottom that I'm fishing on. You know okay there's occasions where if I'm fishing and it's a, it's a really deep stretch you know like you're talking up to 20 like 15 to 20 feet I don't think it makes a difference. The fish are going to see the feed and they're going to come in anyway. But on this stretch of river we have cormorants. In fact there's two pairs just up there working. So maybe that's the reason why the fishing goes kind of... goes flat. The fish get terrified with the cormorants coming to get them. So they just... There we go. So they just disappear for a little bit. So if you're fishing somewhere that's between like under 15 feet, you're coming here in Ireland, bring a darker ground bit or bring something to darken down your ground bit a little bit. That's a little perch. Little perch. Come on, calm down. <laughs> I like little perch. Well, I like perch. Catching the bigger ones is nice. There's a couple of places that I would go to that. They used to hold really, really good perch, but I don't know what's really happened to the perch. They seem to have uh, thinned out in numbers. Which is odd, because usually the urn's quite good for perch. Still feeding caster in the window feeder. Feeding caster, corn, I haven't actually fed any worm yet or put any worm on the hook. Maybe I might get a bit better stamp of fish if I start fishing with a worm. But just kind of working through. I didn't bring the. I did have some fluoro pinkies and fluoro maggots, but I left them in the house today. Just kind of. I tend to feed with like pinkies and stuff like that there. If I'm fishing for the floats, I'm fishing kind of in shallower water. 
I like pinkies when you pinkies are like for those that don't really you have a, like a maggot a pinky is a smaller maggot basically they don't tend to fall through the water so quick so if you're fishing a float that's say mid depth pinkies are good because they kind of hang in the water column and that brings the fish up I'm in two minds whether to put the uh, the waggler rod up Here's the rain getting a wee bit heavier now. I only mixed a kilo of bait. I mixed half a kilo of normal dark crumb and half a kilo of the the uh, census grand or gross gardons noir. And I've just spotted a pike cruise in the margin. Magical. I come here in the winter to catch the pike. Struggle. And there's one that's just cruised the margin. Why for you laugh at me, pike gods? Why? I tried one of the white Mars bars or the white Snickers bars. Yeah, no. Not nice. Not nice at all. Quite awful, actually. So I'm going to have to donate them to somebody. I think I've got about 15 to 20 fish so far. One skimmer noticeable because the, the tail sh uh, shredded, the back of the tail is all nipped. Now of course that could be a pike or that could be uh, a cormorant. It's quite a big gash on the back of it. I got some earache for saying that cormorants should be on the general license and treated like corvins so that uh, shooters can just shoot them. I had a, a quite an in-depth conversation with the guy who sent me a, a PM on the old Facebook messenger thing and he was quite adamant that shooting was the devil and anyone that goes hunting is the devil. And I kind of laughed, you know, I listen to anyone's perspective, their point of view. But what I do when I go shooting, it's perfectly legal. I'm using licensed firearms. And let's be honest, to get a firearm in Northern Ireland, you have to jump through so many hoops. To get your firearms license, you know, it's not something that you can do on a whim, it's a hard thing to get. And then they charge you 150 quid for it every three, every five years. It used to be every 10 years. And our glorious chief of our police here in Northern Ireland wants to, uh, put a tax on magazines for rifles a 30 pound stamp to get it put onto your firearms license for a magazine you know the the inert box of metal that just holds the ammunition yeah you know magazines that arrive that don't even have a fucking serial number so they can't even be attached to a rifle So, that's new. It doesn't make sense to me. It seems that the place here in Northern Ireland and certain politicians wish to make 
uh, shooting and field sports financially out of reach to the working man. Now that might be okay if you're like a doctor or upper middle class, you know, that's got loads of disposable income. But if you're someone that's working class and been furloughed and kind of struggling to get by, having some idiot tell you that, uh, oh by the way, we want another 200 quid out of you for your uh, magazines for your various firearms, it kind of grits a bit. I have loads of time, loads of time for rank and file policemen. I've got policemen in my friend circle and I have a policeman in my family. Loads of time for them. I talk to them all the time. You know, so I'm definitely not anti-cop. But you talk to these people, especially the PSNI, and they all say the same thing that they get thrown under the bus at every opportunity by their by their commanders. Their commanders are more politicians than police officers. So we have issues here in Northern Ireland, but then again you have issues in the rest of the UK as well. You know, thankfully we don't have these extinction rebellion pukes here. I laughed, I, Jesus I laughed, there was one, uh, my friend sent me a video clip of these Extinction Rebellion clowns taking hammers to uh, a, bank in, a bank in London and smashing all the windows in. You know, again, I'm a football fan, I'll go and watch football. See when I go to watch football? It's almost like the cops are itching to fucking get in there and tune you up for, uh, you know, there's some cops that love a scrap and it's, it's plain to see that there's be cops there that are itching to get involved and get into a scrap of football fans. It seems very, very different in how the police actually police the different communities. Like any football fan, I'll tell you, on a match day, you avoid the cops. You know, that's, that's going to ruin your day, getting a fucking police bat in between your eyes. So you avoid the cops. So it cracks me up when I see, like, cops taking a knee to Black Lives Matter, because, you know, apparently that's something that's you have to do. Or cops that stand by and watch these lunatics brick at windows and uh, ask them to stop. Ask. Oh, Mr. Hippie, please, or Mrs. Hippie, please don't smash up the bank windows. That's naughty. Now we're going to have to arrest you. Please come over here and sit in the police car. If I'd have been a normal football fan, you'd have had your head thumped a couple of times and you'd have been dragged to the back of a cop car and thrown it. So yeah, strange times. Same friend sent me another uh, newspaper clip, it was a local newspaper. It was from up in uh, Oldham in North England. And the Extinction Rebellion, Antifa, whatever the fuck they are, tried stopping a train. And it was a load of workmen, like people that were, you know, trying to go to work. And uh, they got, well, they got tuned up by the workmen. <laughs> I expect the Extinction Rebellion were uh, quite pleased to see the policemen just for their own safety. I'm all for protesting. I protest quite a lot. 
usually would have been chucked out of a pub, but you have to protest peacefully. Turning up to somewhere with a sledgehammer and smashing someone's windows, that's not a peaceful protest. That's criminal damage. That's at minimum a fine and a suspended sentence. I've read The Guardian. Now, now, before anyone freaks out too much. It was the story in The Guardian about the the woman who was the extinction, one of the head people in Extinction Rebellion. And she was saying that she was arrested so many times and blah 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 and and she was uh, she was angry with how the police were treating her. She was the police apparently didn't treat her very very fondly, very friendly. It's like uh, excuse me, love, you're breaking the fucking law. You're causing a nuisance. You are going out of your way to ruin the lives of other people. It's like this uh, YouTube video that's going around, or Netflix video that's going around about the uh, the fishing industry. I watched it. I watched it. I gave something a watch and I kind of watched it and thought, okay, let's do some due diligence, shall we? And I went away and I looked at the directors and the people that funded it. And the same people that uh, funded that documentary, funded a documentary saying that we should all be vegans and cow farts are causing global warming. And, you know, if you eat meat, you're basically, you know, a super turbo Hitler. So I'm kind of there thinking, you know, these people are obviously pillars of their community. Folk that we should trust, eh? Not at all agenda driven fuckwits with an axe to grind. Two hours later. It's just gone two o'clock. The weather forecast gives like two to three, the last like period of good weather. And I'm down to like a, a handful of ground bit. So I think I'm going to pack up and take a slow drive home. Well, take a slow drive to the shop to pick up the new bed chair. So let me get packed up and then we'll have a look at what we caught today. If it was a pike angler, there'd be some epic life bits in there. But everything gets chucked back. Anyway, I'm going to pack up and I will... Uh, See you in a minute when I show you what's to keep that. Let's see what we had. Didn't end up with a bad haul of fish. There's some nice roach in there. I'm happy enough with that. Let's go shopping for bed chairs. 